Hey, I'm tired of bending sheet metal in my vise. I'm gonna build a cheap, budget-friendly sheet metal break. So that'll be a 36 inch bender. I'm building it this way right here where I can mount it to this welding table, but also later I can take it off and actually put it on a base when I get to that point. This table is so heavy, it'd be really good to uh, fold metal on. It's not gonna move that table as opposed to a base if you get that heavy metal with just a base platform for this it might try to pivot and rock around and slide around so i'm building it this way for now for that reason i need to grind out of here out of this corner and out of a corner of this here but to get this to pivot exactly in the center so that it doesn't have a big gap when it folds up you need to come in and split this in quarters so that your uh, base plate and your hinge plate pivot. Basically, you're splitting the two of them 50-50. Half of that 50-50. So you're basically just quartering this. So this plate gets a quarter, and then this plate gets a quarter. That way, when it hinges, it'll hinge perfectly in the center. So I'll use this. Unfortunately, on this plate here, it's gonna have, this hinge pin is gonna have to stick up halfway, which is unfortunate, but that's about the only way, other than getting it clear outside your plate. And this is what I'm gonna use for my base. So that's what we have to work with. Well, after I notched these two plates out here, I got this little pin hinge that'll fit right in here, like so. And I can weld this end to the base and this end to the hinge, or to the bending part, on both sides. I also tacked on a, another little piece of angle iron on the back here is my top plate, my clamp plate, was just a little bit wider and it had a tendency to catch up on the edge of this uh, C-channel. So it gave me a little bigger deck. I do need to make sure that this hinge is approximately halfway down. Still have to do more welding on back sides of these, but this is the edge that's going to be 
bending, come up here and you go just a little over half there. Looks like it's working really nice. I like it. I just need to get up underneath here and or in behind here and weld that backside. And like I showed you earlier, I had taken this piece of angle iron and welded it up against the side of this two by C channel to give me a little more table. And then we'll just take this piece. I'll have to grind this edge off so that this sits fully flat on here. As you can see, it doesn't sit flat, so I'll have to cut a little angle off of there or grind that flat like that so that it sits down there. So I got a nice sharp edge here for that metal to bend over. Otherwise, it would be kind of rounded. So I'll finish my welding. Well, I'm not gonna take it all the way down to where this is sharp. It already has a fairly sharp edge, but I, I'm just afraid if I get it too close, I'll get it all wobbly through here. So I'm just gonna stop short of uh, being a blade, and then I'll polish this up with the flat disc, and it should be good enough at that point. I already drilled holes in here. I had figured out where this was gonna be, centered it up on this deck here, and drilled holes for the riser clamp bolts. I don't know what to call them. For those bolts there, so I'll figure out exactly where this clamp needs to be. There's a piece of sheet metal here, I think. Oh, and I found out my scrap pile, this nice bend, bent piece of tubing. And I made that my brake handle. I was trying to find something to put out here on the ends, and I saw that, and I thought, wow, that's perfect. I like it. So anyhow, let's figure out Metal, stick in there. Now I'll just tack it in place on both both of these, and. I'll give it a couple of good tacks and then I'll lift this off and make sure it's going to come off good before I weld it down solid because this needs to be able to float up and down pretty easy and if it doesn't then it's going to hang up and just be a, a pain.
spacers on here, I'm just going to use a nut, an oversized nut. And that'll give me a flat surface to have the washer and nut running on here. I do want to put a, I'll have a spring underneath here, lifting that plate when I back this, when I back that nut off to so the plate will come up and release the sheet metal. And this will just help everything, help the nut and the washer on the upper side run smooth. Let that cool down. And now we're at the point where I can assemble it. I do need to make a, a wing nut, nut for the top. But I'll get this put together. Gotta dig out a spring to put underneath here. I'll let this cool down and we'll go from there. Instead of building wing nuts for my clamping plate. I built a set of cranks, which is actually way better than a wing nut. And all I did was got a piece of flat strap, scrap I had laying around. I drilled a half inch hole, same size as the bolt hole that I'm putting in the clamp plate, welded a nut to the bottom. And the other end I drilled a hole and just basically just put a bolt in here and two nuts to clamp it. And I took the head and just ground it around so it's nothing to catch on. So when you're cranking, it, you won't catch on anything. And this was just a wire loom sleeve, an uncut piece. You could use anything, a piece of pipe, copper tubing or something. Uh, anyhow, that's what I built the, uh, how I built my crank. Okay, here it is all done. Cranks on the ends, springs in here to to lift that plate. Show you how it works. Bend. This cost me ten dollars. I used all this metal that I used was scrap. I had to go buy a spring and paint. And that was it. And I'm pretty happy with it. <laughs>